What is it like being a women's footballer? Being a women's footballer is uh, unbelievable. When I was a kid, that's what I always wanted to do. Um, I always said that that was, that was my goal, that was my ambition. And I didn't know if it was realistic, I didn't know if it was possible back then because it wasn't such a common thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm literally just living that dream. Um, so to be able to go to my job every day and say that it's a job when it's just something I love to do and, and my best hobby, my favourite thing in the world. So yeah, it's unbelievable and definitely the best job I could have ever imagined. When you were 15, how often did you train for each week and for how long? When I was 15, um, I actually trained a lot at, at age 15. I played for Celtic at that time, the academy, and we trained three nights a week, two hours at a time, and then played on a Sunday. Um, I also was involved with the regional squads, so that was an extra night training a week, two hours. But I did a lot of work on my own, just practicing technique, keepy ups, volleys, just little things, going to the park, hitting the ball against the wall outside my house for hours and hours on end. So I probably added up a, a good extra four or five hours a week, just practicing by myself, practicing with my technique. And I think that's where you can get a lot if you don't have the opportunity to maybe train as much with your team, then you can always go and do things by yourself um, and it works wonders. What aspect of training has helped you improve as a team player? This is quite a tough question, I think, because football is obviously a team sport and you play a team sport for a reason. You like to be involved in a team and work with other people and all come together to reach the common goal or target. Um, but I think actually a lot of individual training can really benefit the team. Um, if you can work on something that's your weakness or, um, for example, if if I am right-footed and to play for the team it's going to help me so much if I can use both feet, if I can dribble up to the left, I can dribble to the right, then if I go away and work hard individually on using my left foot it's going to benefit the team. Uh, so I think yeah individual work on your individual weaknesses is something that can hugely benefit your team um, and if everyone does the same then the team's level and the team's uh, standards are going to rise so high. Um, so as much as it's a team sport, I think it's really important to work on your individual stuff as well. How do you cope the setbacks and failures and stay resilient? For me, I've had a lot of injury setbacks. I've had three operations on my knees, um, which have kept me out for maybe nine months, a year at a time. Um, and that's been really tough. Um, it's definitely been mentally more tough than physically and um, I think for me this is my dream this is my life and I want to achieve what I want to achieve and if I know that I've given absolutely everything to achieve that and I don't make it then I can live with that and um, but if I know I gave up too easy it's going to live with me with sit with me for the rest of my life and um, so I think actually just staying focused on the task what can you do today to make tomorrow better if it's very small, it's a process, trust that process and take each day at a time step, take small steps towards achieving what you want to achieve. No goal in life or life itself is going to be like this all the time. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs and you kind of need to ride that wave sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think being focused on the task that you can affect and on that day is very important and not thinking too far ahead and too distant into the future. Um, for me, that's really helped me to stay focused on what I can do right now to make the situation better. Um, but enjoy those times, they make you tougher, they make you learn so much about yourself and, and at the end of the day, you're learning every day to be a better person and be a better player. So setbacks are just part of the journey. How do you keep your confidence up when playing against teams you know might be stronger than you, like when you played the USA with Scotland? Being able to keep your confidence high is really important in uh, professional football and especially at international level. You're playing against the best players in the world um, and yeah, I think you can't overthink it is, is the first thing. 
football is 11 v 11 at the end of the day and those 11 players against our 11 players it's a one-on-one -on -one battle in your position so for me i always try to think of winning my individual battle the player i'm playing against and believe in you're just as good a player as just as high quality a player as they are and you, you may well be you may be better than them on the day nobody is um, guaranteed to play well all the time nobody is guaranteed to play badly all the time so you're only as good as your last game um, so yeah I just think focusing on that 1v1 situation win your individual battle what can you do to make it very very hard for your opponent um, and don't overthink it too much you can't control what's happening on the other side of the field or the pitch do you ever think there will be a time when women managers are accepted in men's football? I really, really hope there's a time that female managers are accepted in, in the male game. And I think we're getting there. I think it's already started to happen a little bit. Um, obviously, Shelley Kerr, she was the manager of the Stirling University football team. And I think they played in the Lowland League. Um, so I think it's happening. It's starting to happen. And for me, as a football player, I don't think many football players care if their manager is female or male, if they're a good manager. Um, it's all about experience, it's all about knowledge, and it's all about understanding the game. And all those things doesn't matter if you're male or female. So, um, yeah, I think that there will be a time when it's seen as a normal thing, and I think that time needs to come soon. It should be like that right now. Um, I think it's women's football is, is really on the rise in our country and it's made huge, huge strides in, in recent times, but it's got a long way to go in terms of things like this, why female managers aren't quite accepted to be on the same level as their male counterparts. And I don't think there's many reasons why they shouldn't be. What do you think about equal paid football? Should it happen if women's clubs can't afford it because they're not getting as much revenue as men? Equal pay is a hot topic just now around women's football and obviously for me I don't see why the pay difference should be a thing. We do the exact same work, we do the same job, we work just as hard um, and I think women's football at the moment is all about investment. If you Kids can't be what they can't see. They see male footballers growing up. They see on TV, they see so much coverage. They can buy their strips in, that, in a shop. Young girls didn't see that for so long. So how could, it didn't really have a chance to become as big. Um, so I think it all comes from investment. If the investment's there, then role models appear. Kids are more aware of women's football. People start to watch more and more people come to the games. Revenue increases. Um, but for the fact of how hard we work and what we do compared to the men, the, the game is the same. It's slower because physically we cannot be as fast as, as ma uh, males. Um, but technically and tactically, I don't see much difference um, at the top level. So I think that, yeah, for me, I don't think it should be... Um, I definitely, definitely don't think it should be the gap that's there right now with the pay. A lot of people would argue maybe women's football can't afford to be on equal pay with men, but the gap should certainly not be that big, whether that means that male players are paid too much or female players are paid too little, that's individual um, opinion. But yeah, I think that the gap should, shouldn't really be there solely based on the fact that one, one set of 11 players are male and one set are female. Who is the person you looked up to that made you want to take up football? Growing up, I came from a really sporty family. Um, we played golf, tennis, squash, um, just about anything. I used to play football in, in the garden with my big cousins on holiday and I absolutely adored them growing up and wanted to copy absolutely everything that they did. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of that, but football wasn't really a big thing with my parents or my big brother. Um, so it was actually a, a active schools class that was run at the school. Um, I pretty much went along to all these classes. I played almost every sport as a kid um, and loved them all. But it was football that really I stuck on and, and had a talent for and just completely caught the buzz. So, yeah, it was lucky I went along to that class and, and just took it from there. How does it feel to be a woman in such a male-dominated field and what message would you give to girls wanting to get into football? 
being a, f- a female in a, in a male dominated field, I think I'm reaping the benefits of the work that's been done before me by national team players and, and previous female footballers who fought and fought for females to get, get the same opportunities as males. Um, and I now get to live that life. I get to be a full-time professional footballer and um, I've been very, very lucky to, to do that. Um, but I think now we've got the responsibility to try and make that opportunity for the next generation even better and even bigger. And I think we're getting there. I think when I was a kid, it was a dream to come to go and play football, but I didn't know how realistic it was or it wasn't right in front of me. I didn't really know if it could happen. I was just going to try to make it happen. But now kids growing up, there's professional teams in Scotland for women. There's professional teams in England for women. There's professional teams all over the world. And that's a realistic goal for young kids now and young girls especially. They can see that in front of them. They have role models, they have people to look up to and they have people that they can create dreams from. Um, And we take that very, very seriously and we have a role to play in that and we are those role models now. Um, So creating chances and making making the dreams come true for the next uh, generation is the best feeling ever and if I can help even one or two people then that would be unbelievable and so I think just work hard you're never going to get here if you don't work hard that's that's the biggest thing it all comes down to what you are willing to put into this and but the rewards that you will get are the best and you will literally live your dreams and if you're willing to put the work in so I think keep working hard, there's going to be downs, there's going to be ups, but it's going to be worth it. So just put the work in because the opportunities are now there for all those young girls growing up. What was it like being told that you're going to play for Scotland's national football team? And the call up to play for the national team for the first time was, yeah, another dream come true. It's something I had always aimed to do and that was one of my big things that I wanted to achieve as a footballer and um, so yeah it was just I was very shocked I was quite young so and um, I think there'd been an injury or something and I, I got pulled in and then um, I actually started the game so my first cap I played from the start which was unbelievable and um, and just a feeling standing there singing a the national anthem it was yeah it was such a proud moment for me a huge huge moment for my family and um, yeah it's the biggest honour you can get as, as a footballer is representing your country and I'm very, very patriotic and proud to come from Scotland so yeah, it was a huge moment for me and one I'll never ever forget. What are your top three tips for achieving your goals? One, again, you have to work hard, you have to give everything, you have to do extra than more than the person that stands next to you, next to you. be the last one on that training pitch. Um, every time and do everything you can to make yourself better, learn, be a sponge, take in every little bit of information that you can get um, just to make yourself the best that you can be. Um, Number two, I think I would tell my younger self this as well, that you need to trust the process. There's not going to be ups all the time, there's going to be downs and it's going to be hard and you're going to wonder, is this worth it? Is is this going to happen for me? but you need to trust the process and really just actually ride the wave of those downs um, because the ups will be worth it. And yeah, just just take it easy and just really accept that there's going to be times it's going to be hard, but how you get through those times says so much about you as a person and teaches you so much about yourself. Um, but lastly, I think the biggest thing for me is you have to enjoy it. You started playing this game because you love it. and. You've got to keep that love or you're never gonna you're not gonna work hard if you don't enjoy what you're doing. Um, you're gonna be miserable if you don't enjoy what you're doing. And um, so you have to enjoy it, you have to love it. And keep that little that little kid inside you that absolutely just loves to play football all the time and, and enjoy training, enjoy games, enjoy the pressure. Um, because one day you'll look back and think, I wish I could go out and play football and you might be too old or not be able to do that anymore so yeah just enjoy every second of it who is the best player you've ever played against i've got a few to be fair um we played against psg with glasgow city and there was a player called shirley cruz who was a midfielder and she was unbelievable 
the turn so quickly with the ball, technically so gifted and just a step ahead of the game. Um, she was just impossible to play against. She was unbelievable. Um, but for me, I probably train every day, day in, day out with one of the best players in the world, um, which is Caroline Sager. And she's now 35 years old and she's still as good as she was 10 years ago. She just controls the game. The most humble human being ever. She's got a Champions League medal. She's got World Cup medals. She's got European medals. She's incredible, but one of the most humble and hardworking people ever. And I see that day in and day out in training. She's the Swedish captain. She's got over 200 national team caps. And yeah, I learn so much from her all the time. She's just so calm on the ball, moves the ball, understands the game. And we'll never see another player like her again, I don't think. Um, along with Anja Mitag, the German, forward she's retired now but again I played with her and she was technically just unbelievable the best player I've ever seen technically and she just did things that nobody else could do and um, again very very intelligent so I think these kind of players were playing in their prime at a time when football wasn't women's football wasn't as big um, and they're maybe not as well known as they should be but yeah incredible